All right, if you have shoulder impingement, we are gonna show you the three best options from experts that we will talk about in the field. Go ahead, Mike. So these three experts are known worldwide and they have helped many people in our clinics as well as people on the internet. But wait, Mike, there's more. We're also going to show a stretch that Bob actually, we say he patented it, we don't know, but he's had excellent luck with this for shoulder impingement as well. I think he's world renowned too. I think so. For shoulder impingement, one of the primary symptoms is when you get your arm up above 90 degrees here, you'll feel a pain right here. Sometimes when you get up high enough, then the pain goes away, but when you come back down, oh, it hurts. It depends how serious it is. Let's look at Sam's shoulder to explain why this happens. So there is a tendon right here under this bone. It's right here, Mike's pointing at it. That's called the supraspinatus tendon. When you raise your arm up, as you can see, it's getting pinched. Pinch, 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 because what needs to happen in a healthy shoulder, the humerus, the ball of the joint, actually drops down, putting a gap in there. And there's a few other reasons I'm not going to get into detail with, but that's the source of the pain, and that's what we're going to eliminate with these treatments. Quickly, I'm going to go through the three experts and how their approach and why it's successful. So the first one is Dr. Kirsch. He's an orthopedic surgeon. He actually was trying to put himself out of business because his exercise actually stretches the tissues around this area, creating more space there, eliminating the pain. Therefore, you don't need surgery. He has a book on it. Mike has it right there. It's called Shoulder Pain, The Shoulder Solution and Prevention. Right. And it's actually written for the layperson. Good illustrations. Helps you out. It makes it very clear. The second person is Brian Mulligan. We don't, you know, he's retired, we're sure of that, but he came up with a simple technique which actually helps the humeral head depress, opening the gap, eliminating the pain. And the third person is Rick Olderman, a therapist who has some very, and he's more recent, he's very young, relatively speaking, and we have a real simple exercise. In his case, we're working on scapular mobility, which opens that same space, and we'll show you that lastly, but not leastly. Let's talk about Dr. Kirsch's. It's called hanging or breakating, and it's simply using, they pull a bar, hanging handles, which Mike is using, and Mike's going to explain the process. So I have the hanging handles here, and I'm up against the wall. It's nice to have a wall for back support. What I'm going to do is drop down into, I feel, a nice stretch here. You want to try to go 30 seconds, or you can go up to two minutes, but start on the cautious end here. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm using my feet for support to begin with. If you feel strong and comfortable, you are able to actually lift your feet up, and then you will get even more stretching, pulling, but you do not have to start there. We would recommend just going down what's comfortable with your feet supported, and this will help gap that area that you're getting the impingement on. Now, some people can't do this or don't have a pull-up bar or hanging handle, so Brad will show an alternative option. For That's this. right. Again, his book is very clear on all the details on this. Now, we found that if you have a broomstick, a piece of PVC pipe, a booyah stick, and you're in a seated position, you're going to put it on the chair, the side of the shoulder with the pain, you're going to reach up. You can help it with this hand a little bit. Then you grab the stick here. Oh, there you go. Mike is using our, our mop handle, which uh, we've become very close to over the years. <laughs> Now, the trick is, is that you do not let your hand slide down the stick or the pole. You grab so it's tight. The booyah stick is really nice because it actually, your hand kind of sticks to it. So you don't have to squeeze very hard. And you lean. You can lean forward, off to the side, whichever feels better. If your shoulder's real sore, you might just lean a little bit. You do this two to three times per day, and with time, it will get better, and you go longer with uh, as it feels better. All right, so that's a nice option to the hanging. The second expert, Brian Mulligan. This is a very simple technique. You can do it either on a table or a countertop. Mike's going to show a version with a stick. So what we're going to do, if you're doing it on a countertop or table, this is a sore shoulder. Put your hand on the table or the countertop, and you're actually, before you do anything, you're going to push down. You see how my, my hand is pushing in to the cushion of the uh, plinth here or the massage table. After you push down, you simply walk backwards. Now what's happening is 
I'm actually gaining flexion or my arm is going like this. But because we push down, that drops the humeral head down so it opens the gap. Therefore, the impingement does not occur and you get relief with that motion. So you do this, it should feel better as you do it. And when you get done doing it, you can test your range of motion. If you start out only getting the here before pain, after the exercise, try it again. And if you gain this much range, you're doing good, continue to do the exercise. Mike, show them the option with the stick. So if you have a stick, you can place it to a good height here. I'm just reaching straight out in front of me. You're going to grasp the pole and push down into the ground or the mat here. Good. Same concept. I'm just going to walk backwards while keeping my arm in place and my arm pushing down as far as you comfortably can. And then I'm keeping pressure and walking back up. How many repetitions should people do? Well, you can start out with two or three. If it feels good, you can go up to five. Then do it three times per day. And that's all there is to it. There you go. Okay, let's go to the third one. Before we go any further, I want to mention we're going to try each technique. Now, you're only going to do the one that feels the best. It may be the number one, number two, or this one with Rick Olderman. But sometimes all three of them work. Now, Rick Olderman's uh, whole uh, idea is to get the scapula. Here we have a model of a scapula looking at Mike's right scapula. Sometimes the scapula gets tight from these muscles getting tight and it doesn't move. And you have to have scapular motion in order to have a pain-free shoulder. So this exercise is simply going to stretch muscles so you have scapular motion, eliminating that impingement. Let's go to it. Before we get this exercise, if you want to check out Rick Olderman's work, you can just go to rickolderman.com. Now, the stretch is called the prayer stretch or child's pose in yoga, it is commonly known as. So we're going to start in all fours position like this. I'm going to push my hands into the mat, and then I'm going to sit my butt towards my heels. Notice I keep my feet together and my knees wide because this is the most comfortable position for me. I'm going to go down here for three to five breaths, and then I'm going to come back up, and the the whole time I'm pushing my hands into the mat, I am not just sitting down like this with no pressure. This will help teach that scapula to raise up as your shoulder is lifting overhead. That's right. All right. Now, if you do not feel comfortable going on your hands and knees, it actually works best on a firm surface like a carpeted floor. Bed, not so well, but you can try it. But seated position. It works really well if you have a chair with wheels. So an office chair may work for you in front of the desk. The hands will go here and you simply roll out the way with the chair and you get that same stretch in regards to the scapular motion. Hold it. Oh, this does feel good. Yes. And come back forward and do that again. Now, if you do not have a chair with wheels, what you're going to need is a towel. So you simply take any towel on a smooth uh, table or surface, and because the chair won't move without wheels, you simply do the opposite. You slide forward, and that will the towel will allow the hands to slide forward, get the stretch, and then come back with the same repetitions and time that Mike had mentioned. Works very well. Okay, this is what you've all been waiting for. We're talking about Bob's famous chicken wing patented stretch. Now, Bob actually had impingement, and he started doing the stretch. It came from another uh, guru, the physical therapy guru, but he added a twist to it, and he found after the stretch, he'd have pain, he'd do the stretch, he could go higher and much less pain. He was very excited about it, and he wanted to share, so we did. So you take a stick or a broom handle like this. Now, you, to do this so it's proper, we're going to stretch Say the left shoulder is the painful one. Take your right hand with the stick in front of you. Put your thumb down so your palm is away. Go ahead, Mike. Follow along. Which shoulder is your painful one? I'm doing my right side because my left shoulder is painful. Okay. Right I'm doing the opposite. Whatever. You take the healthy shoulder hand. Thumb is down. Grab the top of the stick. Lift it up and go around back behind your head. And then you're in this position. Okay. Take the other hand, the palm is away from your body. This is real critical that you get the hand placement right or it will not work. Then grab the stick. Now at this point, you do gentle up and down stretches. 
There we go. And you only go as far as comfortable. Do not go into sharp pain because if you go way up like this, ow, it's going to hurt. Just gentle up and down. It also scratches your back a little bit. Now here's the part that Bob found that really did the trick. He found that if he would actually pull with his good hand up here forward, but not so bumps in your head. It took him a while to figure that out after bumping his head many times. <laughs> He's chuckling over there, it's a joke. Actually bring the stick off to the side so you can pull it forward. Now look at my involved hand. The left shoulder is actually going into extension, we call that, or going backwards. And you go comfortably, you don't push it really hard and relax. So we go chicken wing on and chicken wing off. And that's, if you say that, that's about how long you hold the stretch. On, off, chicken wing on, chicken wing off. Do that three or four times. And then, don't go too aggressive. Check how high you can raise your arm up and see if you can go further with less pain. If that's the case, this stretch would be for you. Do it three times per day and thank Bob on that one. Good luck with your shoulder exercises. I'm sure your impingement will improve. Mike, what else do we have? If you want to check out more videos on shoulder impingement, you can click the link right here, and there's some alternative options. Yeah, the absolute best shoulder impingement exercises self-treatment. We made that one a few years ago, actually. I'm not in it. Yeah. <laughs> You'll probably like that. <laughs> Bob and Brad.